Hey there, it's Nathalie. Welcome to my channel or welcome back. My friend Julie asked me to make a bed skirt for her grandson's room and uh, she wanted it made out of burlap. So I thought, well, I'll take you along on the adventure. And this bed skirt has a split for the footboard. So uh, if you have a wrap around, it's gonna be different. So she gave me the measurements. The length was 84 and the width was 60 and it was 12 inches from the uh, box spring to the floor. So and she also gave me a sheet. Now I'm finding the hem that I'm going to use for the top part of that and then the length down the selvage edge and then I'll just cut that and tear that. Now the burlap had been folded and so uh, I uh, evened off the by just pulling the threads because I want this to be straight because burlap can be real warpy anyway and so then I need to press it before I start this process so a little spray bottle of water got my uh, steam iron on hot on very high press all those wrinkles out and then I'm going to line up to fix my edge on on the ends I'm going to line up those ravel the straight edge ignore the ravels and line up the straight edge of that uh, straight piece of burlap thread. In just a second I'll show you a little kind of close-up of that. Uh, we're going to cut those little ravels off but that's a good way to even up your burlap because again it can be so warped and so twisty and we want this to be straight. So I'm going to take that to the sewing machine and I'll stitch that but, the, but I want to go ahead and do the other end and so because I'm dealing with a huge like one and a half length of like that was 84 so I think I'm 136 inches or 140 inches something like that so I'm going the whole length to make sure I don't get this twisted and then match up again at the end and you can see those ravels hanging off there uh, on that side but but that thread line is straight it's a warp and the wolf and I don't know which one is a warp and which one is the wolf or something like that because I'm not a weaver but anyway, so weavers don't be hating on me or telling me what I'm saying wrong. It'll be okay. Anyway, so we're going to do like a uh, half inch seam. And there's enough gathering in here that if it's a half inch, three quarters inch, it's not going to make a whole lot of difference. But I want to catch enough that whenever I come back, I can uh, trim those ravels off and then turn it right side out. And burlap doesn't have a right or a wrong side. So, I mean... I'll let you kind of deal with that however you want to deal with that. So I just made sure that I wasn't twisted in this length of fabric. So again, I used it, uh, took my width and the length of what the bed skirt was supposed to be and multiplied it by one and a half to get how the fullness. Uh, and I'm going to do a double stitch on here. So I did about a presser foot width and now I'm doing about the half inch stitch. Just a straight stitch, just kind of a medium length stitch back stitch at the at the beginning and then the end and now I'm going to cut those little all those little ravelly parts off and you can see if you look you can see the the straight of the the fiber of the burlap I know I'm off the frame there we go and I know you might have some mask laying around you may when you're working with burlap you may want to wear a mask seriously because the fibers are light they go everywhere they get in everything they cling to everything anyway so I'm turning that right side out and I'm going to kind of just like twist it finger twist it a little bit to get it to to lay flat and then pin it and I've got this speeded up a little bit but I still think that you can see what I'm doing here so press that with my fingers and then pin it in place Kind of just roll that, make it mind. I mean, you're smarter than the burlap, so sometimes you have to convince the burlap that you're smarter, but anyway, get that. And you can pin it or not pin it. That just depends on how you want to do it. You could use wonder clips or something like that if you wanted to do that too, instead of using straight pins. Now I'm going to edge stitch this. And this is one more security on keeping that burlap from raveling out. And if you wanted to do one more row of stitching, a top stitching, you could. But I don't, since it's not going to get a lot of wear as a bed skirt, I mean, even in a kid's room, I think, I think that this will be sufficient. So, 
and do both ends of that. And then we'll be ready to, to do the gathering. All right, so now what I've done, this is the whole length, that long, long part. That was the fold that I just showed you. And I'm zigzagging the, the, the edges, not the folded edge, but the cut edge and the, actually the selvage edge. Now, now I'm going to go back. This is what I'm going to do to, to do the gathering. This is kind of a trick that I've used for a long time. Uh, I've got a piece of crochet thread and uh, out of my stash of vintage <laughs> rolls of, uh, of th crochet thread. I'm going to do a wide zigzag across that uh, piece of crochet thread and I want to make sure that I do not catch the crochet thread in my stitching because and I was just pointing to the edge where I had zigzagged it already. So making sure that I have that wide enough to go across. I'm sorry that the, the picture blurred out there. It'll come back into focus in just a second. Anyway, zigzagging across that piece of uh, crochet thread and that's going to be strong enough for me to pull on that thread to gather my gathers up. This is the easiest way to do this. Uh, I've done ruffles and gathers for a long time. So there at the end, leave you a tail about six inches at the beginning and six inches at the end. So now I'm going to go to the cutting table so I can spread out and uh, find the middle and I've got safety pins because regular pins would have a tendency to kind of to slide out and I want, since I've got to manhandle this a little bit I need those safety pins. So I'm going to find the middle and then I'm going to fold it in half again and mark it both sides. So now it's in fourths, it's marked in fourths with the safety pins and again, if you wanted to use clips to mark that, because the clips are not going to slide, but straight pins might. And then I'm going to do it one more time, so then it's going to be folded into eighths. So in half, in half again, and in half one more time, so that you get it in eighths. Now I just put a little straight pin in that one, because I was running short on those big safety pins. Got all pinned in place. I guess you could mark it too if you want to, but I just didn't want to mark the uh, fabric. Now then, I'm, I've got my my sheet has already been cut and or torn to the length that I need with a little bit of wiggle, like an an inch. I think I allowed a, like an inch and a fourth. So where I was, I can't remember now. It's 84 inches, then I would have been 85 and a half inches in my length. So I'm doing the same thing in half and half again, but I allowed one edge at the top edge, it's hemmed and at the bottom edge, it's raw. So I pull that uh, about an inch off of the bottom before I made my fold. So there's the one that's the in half and half and half again in eighths. And then we're going to match that to the burlap. all pinned in place. One more fold. There we go. And this would probably be pretty easy to do with, uh, mark it with a pencil or a uh, Taylor's chalk or something like that. All right, so now what we're going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my halfway of my burlap and my halfway of the sheet <clears throat> and match those. You could start at the eighth part, but I like to go to the halfway. That's just me. So there's my halfway mark on my sheet. Find my halfway mark on my burlap. And it doesn't matter because the, the it doesn't matter whether the uh, that gathering, that crochet stitched edge is against the uh, the sheet or whether it's facing up. Either way, it's easy to gather up either way. I think I did one side one way and one, the other side the other way. And there's, since there's no right or wrong to the burlap, it's not important. So now I'm just pulling that thread through the zigzag stitches to gather that up. And work that all towards the middle 
for me, this is the easiest way. Go to the middle, work that fullness in, and then I'll find my eighth mark and then do that. And there it is. And see, I, I still need to get quite a bit more gathers worked in there. Pin that in place. And I'm just making, double, double, making sure that I've got all of my pins where they need to be. And then that, that my halfway mark is actually really and truly my halfway mark. Pull those gathers in, adjust them. I love this technique because you can really adjust the fullness however you need to adjust it. And you can adjust it as you go. So if it slips a little bit, it's not a big deal. That's the reason you have the tail at the beginning and the end. And when you finish this, you're going to have a long tail hanging off the end. All right, so that looks pretty good like that. So, and then I have some assistance to do the rest of the work, and that's Kitty No, uh, for obvious reasons why her name. So at the end, what I'm gonna do, I've got a straight pin in there, and I'm just lapping that crochet thread back and forth in like a little figure eight to kind of hold it in place to make sure that it's not gonna come undone very far on me. And so each one of those little sections has been pinned. Now I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine and fight with it in the sewing machine. This burlap was a little bit, uh, probably a higher quality burlap, and so it's a little bit thicker. And uh, so now I'm gonna go ahead and unwrap that crochet thread from around the pin. And then I wanna make sure that I don't stitch on the crochet thread. I'm gonna scoot over a little bit off of the zigzags and off of the, and I'm using a straight stitch. You can see the, um, the edge of my zigzag there. And then I'm gonna shove that. You see how close my fingers are getting? You don't have to do that. <laughs> you do not have to put your fingers that close to the needle or the presser foot. <laughs> but I am being careful to watch that my finger is not under the needle. It gets really close on the presser foot, but yeah, so just be careful as you fight with those uh, gathers. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I am zigzagging the edge one more time. I'm catching the, the sheet, the lining part that's gonna go underneath the mattress and the, the edge of the burlap. And that's just a, a stray burlap thread that's out there that I just got into there and I'm gonna go ahead and clip that off and get it out of the way. Uh, so just it just kind of gives it another finish. If you, if you wanted to serge it, you could, but I just chose to go ahead and just do a zigzag. Again, this is not gonna get a lot of wear or stress on it. So <laughs> just a little zigzag there and then almost to the end. So we're gonna do this on all three sides the same exact way. Even though the measurements will be a little bit different, you're still gonna go half and half and half again. All right, clip off those extra threads. Now what I'm gonna do is, uh, because the bed skirt has, or the bed has a uh, footboard on it, so it needs a split. So this is the, the foot part of it, the bottom, the, yeah, the foot part of it. And uh, so it's gonna form kind of a little L shape there. And I'll show you that in just a second. Anyway, the technique is the same. Running, gather that all up in there. And you can see I have the, the crochet thread. That it's on the top. See, there's kind of the little L shape. And there's the skirt. Anyway, I'll unfold that in a second so you can see better what I'm talking about. All right, and the top edge was an unfinished edge, so I went ahead and rolled a little hem there. So it'll be finished, no ravels on the top. Uh, part of that little sheet. That's the L shape that I was talking about, little right angles right there. And so that's what's go, gonna go around the footboard and uh, separate so that she can drop that over there and it'll hang pretty. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've learned something in this video. Be sure you like and subscribe and share me with your friends. And look, doesn't that look so stinking cute for a little boy's room? And uh, I will see y'all next time. Bye-bye.